Hey, what's up, Derek Kirk of Adventuretron, and today I've got another video straight out of Mind in Motion, and in this one, we're learning how to elevate and mix texture maps and things in or an organic, easy to control way across your material. This lesson comes right after the lesson about how to combine two different materials. This one's more about diving into the color layer and figuring out how to use different texture maps and organically and procedurally generating natural looking imperfections and the subtlety of that and how to really elevate your render beyond just like you know the limitations of just preset materials that you have like how to really create your own look and style and fine tune to exactly what you want again mind emotion fundamentals and mind emotion animate can be bundled to save and right now at the time of this video until the end of april 2025 you can save an extra 20 percent so you're saving 100 bucks for the stuff uh just by clicking that link below and using code spring 2025 and you get access to literally learning everything inside of c4d and redshift uh pretty much so check it out it's 100 plus videos 55 hours of content training yeah all right let's take this one step further so i've gone into the asset browser and grabbed kb connector I'm just using objects that are, you know, kind of neat looking. And basically this will work with anything. It's very geometry based. So as long as it has nice clean edges, you can do this. You can do this with like mechs or um, cars, whatever you want. Like text is a really good one to do a nice edge on your text to mix it pop a little bit more. I'm going to throw a subsurface division on this by holding alt and clicking that just to smooth it out a little bit. And that of course will affect our edges because it's smoothing out our edges. Uh, but that's totally fine. This looks really nice. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is how to take it from this and make it a little more organic looking and less, <clears throat> excuse me, less uniform looking. So basically, we've got gold evenly distributed across all of our edges, basically. You know, um, and let's say I want some bits to not have gold or whatever, kind of like it was scratched away. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about how to combine these things as well as how to combine things uh, for bump maps using the bump blender as well as just the color layer to start combining things. So inside of this material that we created last time, if you don't have it, remember it's very easy to set up. Reference node, reference node, material layer, and then curvature with a ramp, right? That's all we're doing. So what I want to do is I want to change the mask so that this will be a little more organic. Now, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could layer this back in on top of this again with a new mask and do it that way, or you can use a color layer here. Now, if you wanted to layer this back in on top, you would need to swap this out for a material blender so you could have more than two layers. But we're gonna continue with the material layer and just use the color layer to add more here. So what we want to do is we want to change the way this white and black is working. We want to break this up and make it look more organic, right? It's kind of a cool look like that, right? All right, so we're gonna hit C and we're gonna type in color layer. Here we go, pull that in. And then we're gonna type in something like Maxon noise, or we can just use an imperfection map. So you can use whatever you want, grayscale values. So the way this is gonna work is it works just like this. We're gonna grab this ramp, plug it into the base color, and I select this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab, uh, just for the sake of demonstration, we'll grab a Maxon noise, grab that, pull that in. And if you isolate this, what we want to create with this is a nice map that's going to have some contrast that will layer into this one to give it to break up these solid lines. So what I mean by that is if you come down here and let's change this to turbulence, it's my favorite, and we're going to go to input and we need to make it bigger. So like 80. Okay. And we're going to go to output and we're going to clamp up that low clip. There we go. And we're going to clamp down this white clip like so. Okay, so now wherever is going to be white, we're actually going to delete this because we're gonna set this color layer by default, it's set to black, which is fine because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this mask, which is gonna make it add black in wherever it's white here, which will effectively erase this, right? So if we take this, plug it in here to the color layer mask so layer one mask and isolate that you'll see we're going to get a nice organic breakup on our colors here so we can start to come in here 
and tweak and adjust that if we want. So we can control that by lowering the low clip, which will make it a little darker. Really cut it down or bring it up so we can really start to control how this is being applied in a much more organic, natural way that looks a lot less uniform. So the way this is working is we have our base layer and then we're applying a layer of black, which is erasing these bits that's based on a mask that we created here. So if we just take that and plug that in to the mask here and unsolo that, we'll now get that gold distributed in a more organic kind of wear and tear way, which is kind of neat. Doesn't make a lot of sense with the gold, but let's say you had something that was like painted and then you had raw metal underneath. That looks kind of cool. So let's just go ahead and grab that really quick. So let's say materials will go to, um, let's see, metal. Sure. We'll grab like metal paints, anything, like a, anything that we have that's not behind a paywall here. Not particularly. We'll grab this one, metal paint. Throw that over here. And let's change the color of that to like blue. Okay, go into our blender and we're gonna say reference metal paint. So that'll be our base color. And then we'll have this gold, right? But we don't want gold, we want like a, like a kind of a metal that's been revealed underneath, like a steel. There we go. So we'll grab a steel and grab that, bring it in and go back into our blender and then go to that reference and select that. So now we have kind of this blue paint that's now been kind of scratched away a little bit here. Now, it doesn't look amazing. Um, I do want to, let's see, I do want to crank this up a little bit to get a little bit more of that white. Sorry, the opposite effect. There we go, so we have a little bit more but I want it to go beyond the edges, right? I want it to also just have some bits of across it that just look like it's been worn away as well. So the edge wear is nice, but I want more. So how do we do this? Well, let's go ahead and add some media here and we'll type in imperfections and we'll do some scratches like this, really heavy scratches. Click and drag. Now, if you were to add this in, on its own, obviously it would be a little too intense. You kind of see it, but it's just kind of weird the way now that the edges aren't broken up. So how do we combine these two? Well, we can just layer it in on top. So again, we can have this, this goes into here and this can go into mask two, but this time we want this mask for layer two, we need to enable it. And we want that mask to be white because we're actually going to add this in on top. So there we go. Now we have some scratches going in on top of that. We also can take this and type in a bump, bump map, bring that into the bump map, texture input, and say like negative 0.2, and grab that and plug that in See, this is the issue, right? We don't have, we don't have a bum map here. So what do we do? Well, we have to just pick a material and throw it on there. So what I can do is just hold control, click both of these and control C and we'll go into our paint here. And there's a lot going on here, but we're just going to add it in here into this bump blender that's here. So what I'm gonna do is just hit paste and it doesn't matter where, like bump blender or whatever. We're gonna grab this, bring it in here, and we're gonna make this input layer two, bump input. And instead of there, we're just gonna add that weight all the way up and make sure additive is on, and it's just going to add that in. Now, normally you wouldn't have to mix it with all this stuff. You could just throw this straight into the bump map, but there we go. So now we have this like scratched material and if you wanted to, you really could um, emphasize it a little more even by again, adding a ramp in in between these two things. 
So again, ramps are just really great ways to add contrast and stuff with this. So with a ramp, clamp it down, really make it pop. Again, it's helpful to isolate that. So we really see how this is gonna work. So there, bring this up so we don't get as much of it anywhere else. Nice, okay. Unsolo that. And voila, we have these nice crisp scratches and stuff going onto our metal. And so now it looks like a completely different object. We've got that metal wear on the edges. We've got the rest of it going on. It's very, very nice. Now, again, you could c combine these even further, you know, and do like another one that's masked with this. And you can do a color layer that plugs into a color layer. So if you just wanted the edges to look like this, but again, it's all really like you start stacking things together. But the main thing is understanding how the mixes are working and just how easy it is to actually combine things, but also the limitation of the setup with saying like displacement uh, needs to be set up. If you're going to displace something, you have to do it inside of the blender material. So it needs to go inside of here, not inside the reference materials. They don't transfer over. Okay, so you'd have to put them both in here. Second, uh, if you're going to do a bump map, you need to do those inside of the materials, not inside of here. Okay, so that's the main thing. But yeah, that's how you can create this nice, cool wear and tear paint. I think we should probably... Oh, that's pretty good. I mean, we could come in here to this paint and mess with the roughness value, but there's just so much going on here. I don't even want to mess with it. There we go. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So that's a cool way to come in, add some organicness and mix things and make it look like a whole new material when really you're just throwing in a couple texture nodes or um, some noises or ramps, whatever, curvature, and just combining things that are already made. So it looks like something new. Really, it's just combining two things. So pretty cool that you could come in here and do that. Now, again... You can start layering this even further, whereas if you want this, you know, layer to to not be applied fully throughout it, of course, you could do another color layer here like this. So we do a color layer in between before it gets to that. And we can say, take this noise and let's make a copy of it. Change the seed. Throw that into this mask. So now they isolate this, we'll see we have those scratches, but we'll have the mask coming in. I'll pull this up. Up or down? Down? Yeah, and this down. Yeah, so now we can add a layer of organicness and randomness to this scratch layer. So it's not even, you know, the entirely full scratch layer before we even bring that in to mix with this. So now when we come back into here, we'll get scratches like that. Now, if you do change that, you would want to take this that you have created here, copy that, go into that paint layer and update this bump map here that you've created. So paste and that would replace that bump. So now you get a more organic look here. Well, we'll get some scratches are stronger than others. They're kind of all over the place, but there you go. Pretty cool. Very nice. All right, cool. Now there is another video later that's got a mech. Um, it's a lot more in depth into it. It's kind of a bonus lesson. If you want to get into it, you can. Uh, in the next lesson, I'll talk about adding dirt and stuff real quick with the same kind of thing.